lecture number one understanding network security principles in this lecture we are going to cover okay what are the goals of network security then we are going to talk about the OSI security architecture uh, then we are going to discuss about the common attacks okay common attacks and defense mechanisms then we are going to talk about the security attacks classifications then security service categories and finally we are going to discuss about the security models so these are the six major topics we are going to cover in this particular lecture now so let me go to the first one the goals of network security so you take any security so what is the goal what is the main goal means cia confidentiality integrity and availability the same thing available in the computer security a also okay because we cannot change this you go for any security so the basic and the fundamental goal okay what is that means it is going to be the confidentiality integrity and availability okay plus okay include after so that means uh, with confidentiality integrity and availability there are so many other parameters okay you can have there are so many other things available okay you can include with that so that are okay that is the security goals now let me go to the first one what is confidentiality what do you mean by confidentiality so confidentiality means I'm going to protect or I want to protect something from the unauthorized people, from the unauthorized users. Okay, for example, I'm having some data in my machine. So this data is a confidential data. Okay, it is a confidential data. I don't want this data to see, okay, by anybody. I don't want my data, okay, to access by anybody. So what I do, I want to do means I'm going to do some encryption and I'm going to keep it. So this is called confidentiality. Confidentiality means you can avoid, you can prevent unauthorized access for your data. Okay, unauthorized user should not access your data. So that is called confidentiality. Loss of confidentiality. Suppose I lost. I lost confidentiality. What does it mean? What is the meaning of that means? That means unauthorized people are reading your data. That means your data is disclosed. Your data is accessed by everyone. Okay, that is called confidentiality. So very simple, make it very simple. So confidentiality means you have to protect your data from the unauthorized access. Okay, from unauthorized access. This is confidentiality. Now, go to integrity. What is integrity? Means, unauthorized people should not change your data. You have to avoid, okay, or you have to protect your data from unauthorized modification. So, modification or destruction of data. So, that means, you take example, bank musket is available. So in the bank musket database, they have all the data, very important data, okay? So the customer name, customer ID, and what is the balance amount? The balance amount, okay, the customer is having. Suppose, if they don't have integrity, if the bank musket don't have integrity means, anybody can enter into their database and they can simply modify the data. Okay, modify the data. So this is called integrity. So integrity means only authorized people or authorized user can modify the data. Others cannot modify the data. Loss of integrity. Suppose if the integrity is lost. If the integrity is lost, what does it mean? That means unauthorized person can modify your data. Unauthorized person or unauthorized users 
can modify the data. This is called integrity. Now, availability. What is availability means whenever you need the data, you must access your data. Okay, whenever you need the data, you must access the data without any issues. That is called availability. So what is loss of availability means whenever you need the data, you cannot access. You cannot access your data. That is called loss of availability. Okay, try to understand. So availability means whenever you need, okay, whenever you need the data must be accessed by the authorized person. The authorized person must access the data whenever needs. Okay, that is availability. So, loss of availability means, okay, the authorized person, okay, the authorized person or the genuine user cannot access the data whenever he needs. Okay, whenever he needs. So, this is called, okay, loss of availability. So, you take any security, it is network security or computer security or cyber security. So, in any security, if you go, the aim, what is the goal? Means the goal is CIA. This is the primary, the major goals. So, these are the three different goals. Now, go to the second one, the next one. With these goals, that means with CIA, there are so many things, okay, nowadays people are adding. Okay, so with the basic goals, with the primary goals, CIA, now we had another two, okay, another three, four, there are so many we can add, there are plenty of terms available. So what is that means? The first one is authenticity. Then the next one this is the fourth one, the fourth goal is Okay, authenticity and fifth one is accountability. So there are so many things available, non-repetition. Okay, you will you will study all these things later. Now, so the fourth goal, goal of user security, it is authenticity, and the last one is accountability. Okay, what is authenticity? Means being genuine, the property of being genuine and being able to be verified and trusted. You should be verified and trusted. Okay, what is that? Okay, I'm seeing many students now join, okay, in this meeting. So how, no, how I know, how do I know? You are all belongs to the College of Applied Science. Maybe a hacker, a attacker can come and join in this meeting. But what I'm doing means, by using your email ID, you are showing your email ID. Whenever you join, your email ID is coming to me. So that means you are producing, okay, you are producing, okay, yeah, email ID. So using that, I'm going to authorize, I'm going to authorize you. Okay, the same thing, you see, the property of being genuine and being able to be verified, okay, I'm going to verify you. I'm going to verify you, the same thing, if you just go outside, okay, the policeman stops you, you how to produce your card. If I enter into the college in the morning, security guard is going to stop me, security they stop me, and they're going to ask my ID card, where is your ID card? So I'm going to show my very ID card, okay, I'm showing I'm the genuine, I'm the right user. Now. The security guard is going to verify that. He is going to check my ID card. Then, okay, he is going to allow me. He is going to be verified and trusted and he is having the confidence that I am the correct person. Then he will allow me inside. So this is called authenticity. Then accountability. Accountability means you have to take or if someone is going to take accountability. That means taking the responsibility. If I do something, I'm going to accept it. Yes, I have done. Okay, that is called accountability. See, the security goal that generates the requirement for actions of entity to be traced uniquely to that entity. That means whatever the action done by an entity, whatever I'm doing, whatever the actions of an entity, it should be traced. It can be easily traced 
uniquely at okay uniquely to that entity very simple i will give you an example i'm giving a missed call to you i'm giving a missed call to you if i give a call or missed call to you so automatically it will be registered where it will be registered in my mobile phone it will be registered where it is registered means you can see there is an option called call register so in call register it will be registered and also in your phone in your phone also it will be available in the call register later on later on i cannot deny okay later on i cannot deny so that means i cannot say no okay i didn't call you i didn't send any message to you you cannot deny like that so this is what is accountability means any action you do it will be registered somewhere later on easily we can trace you can track it and you can find it and the other person cannot say no for it okay they cannot say no for it now you can see this supports accountability is supporting non repudiation so these are all very important terms deterrence okay all these things we are going to discuss in the in the coming four uh, classes fault isolation <coughs> intrusion detection and prevention so if you have accountability the accountability will be used in all these places okay in non repudiation i'm not explaining non repudiation now we will see it later so what is accountability means whatever the actions you do that actions will be registered or recorded somewhere and easily we can trace it you can find it so people cannot say no for it if you do something you have to accept it if i send a email to you it is registered it is available in my okay uh, the sent message it will be available in your mailbox so i cannot deny it okay automatically it will be registered okay so this is called accountability so now the five basic principles okay five basic principles of security the first one is a confidentiality okay protect your data second one is a integrity unauthorized person cannot change the data availability data should be available to the authorized person authenticity please be genuine and produce it you have to prove it accountability means every action will be registered or recorded so these are the five different goals of a security system any security system okay any type of security system you take these are the five different goals now we are going for network security okay teacher you are teaching the same course computer security and network security can you give me some small explanation how these two things will be different okay i will explain what is network security so easily you can understand okay both now i am just going so what is network security what we are going to focus okay in the network security means you can see here i am just going to take two machines okay so this is my first machine then this is the second machine so two computers i am taking now i am going to create a network okay so this two machines i am going to connect okay i am connecting the two machines like this so two machines are connected like this then from the first machine or the second machine you can connect it to the internet okay that means you can connect to the outside world okay outside world also you can connect your machine okay for example this is the internet so you can connect your machines to the outside world okay to the outside world also you can connect now what network security what we are going to focus in the network security means in network security okay we are going to okay focus on 
okay how to secure your data in transmission in this place okay this is called transmission so transmission means your data is going to move here okay your data is going to move in this particular place so how to protect your data here during the transmission how to protect your data we are going to talk about this in the network security okay so in computer security what we are going to do in computer security you are going to study how to protect your data in this particular place okay only in this place how to protect your data okay you are going to talk about this this is going to be the computer security but in network security during the transmission during the transmission how to protect your data from one machine to another machine or from one machine to the internet to the public network so when the data is moving to the public network how to protect your data okay because this is the place the dangerous place okay so this is the dangerous place where all the hackers attackers are sitting here so how to protect your data in this in this place so this is going to be the network security so if you go for security network security we will talk about the layers osi layers okay because you need you need the layers for communication there are seven layers available here and there are seven layers available in this machine okay each layer is doing something about the layers and all you will study here but in computer security you are not going to study okay all the layers and all okay that is going to be related to a single computer okay or it is related with a information system in this machine i am having an information system information system means a software okay how to protect my information system okay your information system will be available here so how to protect the information system this is we will study but in network during the transmission between the two pc or from one network to another network or from the ne private network to public network okay in this place how to protect the data that is going to be the network security okay so some concepts will be similar but 90% it will be different 10% okay you will have same concepts somewhere here and there so same concepts will be available okay now i think you understand the difference between these two okay network security and computer security now i'm going for the next slide why network security is needed okay why it is needed why what is the reason i'm not going to read it line by line i will tell the important point the major thing is you are going to send the data from one place to another place from one place to another place okay networked computers so if you are sending the data from one place to another place this is what i explained in the previous slide by using the diagram you are going to send the data from one machine to another machine or from one network to another network or from a private network to a public network so the data is going to move so if the data is going to move lot of chances available for the attacks plenty of chances what is that okay you see the data is transmitted data transmission data is going to move so when the data is going to move so anybody attackers can easily they can sniff your message they can take a copy of your message okay they can easily capture your packets they can easily read what is available inside that nowadays in this business era we are sending the confidential data we are sharing the confidential data okay in the internet we are sharing the confidential data from one computer to another computer if okay the entire business is going on okay you want if you want to give an example okay in my machine i'm taking the browser i'm going to the bank muscat website www.bankmuscatonline.com i'm going to enter the username i'm giving the password then if i click okay username and password 
is going from my machine to the bank basket machine from my machine to the bank basket machine okay the username and password is going in the internet anybody if they capture this okay if they capture this data finished they can easily enter into my account and they can do anything so we must protect we must protect our data in the network while the data is moving while the data is transmitted during the transmission so your data must be protected so this is the reason why we need network security in computer security it is not like that okay the data is stored in one place okay the information system the software is available in one place i want to protect that okay the the concept is that okay the concept is in my house in my flat but network security is on the way i am moving from one place to another place so on the way i need security okay so this is the basic difference okay now let me go to the next slide so when you talk about the network security so we have to have some layering concept everything we can see it you can see osi security architecture so osi model you might have studied about the osi model in previous classes that means our uh, data communication or in some other course can anyone how many layers available how many layers osi layers how many layers totally i think seven seven layers good very good okay we are getting some answers so there are seven layers available yes okay don't worry don't worry i'm not going to ask what are the layers huh? i'm not going to ask okay tell the layers in the correct order okay let me tell so it is apst application layer presentation layer session layer transport layer network layer data link layer and physical layer okay there are seven layers available so in every layer you are going to do a different thing a different type of security mechanisms or a different security tools you can use it in different layers okay now security attack security mechanism security service so what is this means in every layer a different security attack will happen if you take layer 1 okay in layer 1 that is a physical layer you will be having a different set of attacks if you are going for layer 2 in layer 2 that means in the data link layer so there are different set of attacks network layer there will be a different set of attacks so there is no common attack okay in all the layers this is point number 1 then point number 2 security mechanisms the security mechanisms also it is going to change in layer 1 you are going to use a different security mechanisms in layer 2 you will be having a different security mechanisms layer 3 a different security mechanisms will be available then security services every layer will provide a different service so what we have to understand in this slide means in wo in network in seven different layers seven different services will be running seven different mechanisms will be used seven different attacks you can expect okay so different attacks every layer will have different different attacks every layer will have mechanisms different mechanisms and every layer is going to have a different service okay so this is what you have to understand now what is attack what is attack what is mechanism what is service okay so first the overall idea every layer will have a different set of attacks every layer will have a different set of mechanisms and every layer is going to provide a different service good what is attack what do you mean by attack 
so attack means it is going to be an action any action that compromise your security goals any action okay this will be done by the attackers this will be done by the unauthorized people so any action done by the attackers okay to compromise the security i will tell in another word simple way any action done by the attackers for loss of cia for the loss of confidentiality integrity or availability if you lost okay because of that that is called a attack so attack is an action by the unauthorized people okay to compromise the security then what is mechanism so mechanism is a process that is used for detecting preventing and recovering from the attacks you can detect you can prevent and you can recover from your attack by using security mechanisms there are lot of security mechanisms available firewall intrusion detection system encryption okay there are plenty of thing even passwords password pin number everything is a security mechanism so using the security mechanisms okay you can okay you can detect you can prevent or you can recover from the attacks then what is a security service a service means okay you can see communication processing or communication service that enhances the security that is going to improve the security of your system anything of data processing of our data transfer anything so this is the the keyword this is going to enhance your security is going to improve your security that is called a security service a security service okay a security service will improve it will enhance the security for data processing or for data transmission or for data storage okay anything so this will provide you a service okay it will provide you some service for you so by using that you can protect yourself you can protect your data okay in the in the system that means in the computer or so while sending it okay these are the three things so what is an attack what is a mechanism and what is a service okay so these are the three things you have to understand in every layer this is going to be different okay because it is network security so in every layer you are going to have a different things now the next one is threat threat and attack there are two different terms threat and attack so what is a threat what is an attack okay now so threat means it is a violation of security violation of security that means not following the rules some violation of security we are going to say as a threat then which exist when there is a circumstances capability action even it could be anything it could be a situation it could be a capability or a action or a even okay whatever it is a threat is a possible danger a threat is a possible danger it could be anything it could be a event it could be a situation okay it could be a action by the unauthorized people okay by the unauthorized people okay a possible danger that must exploit a vulnerability they are going to use the weakness okay i repeat i repeat in a different way by using some vulnerability by using the vulnerability if someone is doing something if some unauthorized person okay is doing something means that is going to be a threat so exploit exploit means make use make use of a vulnerability making use of the vulnerability any event any action okay anything done by using okay and vulnerability it is going to be the threat then so threat can be intentional intentional means the attackers will do intentionally 
attackers will do intentionally intentionally means they know you have weakness so by using that weakness they will attack you so intentional attack or accidentally attack any accidental attack also so a threat could be either intentional or it could be either accidental okay accidental but what is the output okay what is the output the output is going to be a disaster okay you see another example so intentional accidental or the possibility of act of god act of god that is also going to be okay a threat okay for example like earthquake fire okay so these are all it may happen it may not happen we don't know when it is happen okay so using your vulnerability using your vulnerability if somebody is doing something wrong or some some harm if somebody is creating means that is called the threat so this could be intentional or accidental or it could be a act of god okay actually the major is intentional accidental that is a major now this is about the threat attack okay slightly these two terms okay always the people will confuse in these two terms now i'm going for the attack so what is an attack means an action or an assault on the system security that derives from an intelligent threat so from this threat from this threat okay so you you understand what is threat so from this threat if any action done for your security that is going to be the attack okay that is going to be the attack so intelligent act intelligent intelligent act means okay people they have done very intelligently and deliberate attempt so they are going to attempt to break your securities okay they break your securities so this is going to be the attack okay so threat and attack it is closely related if you have a threat by using the threat the attacker will attack you that is the concept okay so if you have a threat the attacker will attack you so this is going to be the threat versus attack so this is only one slide okay just these two important terms then the next one is you can see common attacks and defense mechanisms what are all the attacks common attacks then we will discuss about the defense the defense mechanism means how to protect okay we are going to uh, see i think another six slides okay it will come okay the first attack is eaves dropping this is very very common eaves dropping this is one of the common attack okay i'll just put the numbers so that you can understand easily eaves dropping so what is eaves dropping teacher so eaves dropping is very easy what is that means two people they are talking to each other a and b okay two people they are talking to each other okay x and y now the third person the third person is our attacker so the third person is going to listen to him he is going to listen to him without their knowledge what they are talking okay what they are talking so the third person is going to listen to him this is called eavesdropping in computers if you go to the networks not computers in networks so in networks how it will happen you can see so the first person is sending the data to the second person okay now see this is a first person okay or first computer or first network you take anything so sending the data to the second okay so sender and receiver this person is a sender and this person is a receiver okay now so the sender is sending the data to the receiver okay now without the knowledge without the knowledge of the sender and the receiver okay a third person okay a third person is going to listen is going to take a copy of that so what is that or how it is possible you can see so the third person the third person is attacker so the attacker is going to take a copy of that particular data so this is called eavesdropping so this person is a genuine authorized person and this person is a genuine he is the sender he is the receiver now a attacker okay let me change the color okay you will understand easily so attacker 
is going to take a copy of that. This is called eavesdropping. So in network, if you go for the network, in network, this is very common attack. Okay, you are thinking, you are chatting with some friends, or you are thinking that you are sending message to someone. In between, anybody can capture your data. Okay, anybody can capture your data. So this is called eavesdropping concept. Okay, you can say eavesdropping, or you can say packet sniffing. This is called packet sniffing. Or you can say it is a passive attack. It is not active attack. This is a passive attack. Passive attack means, okay, it is coming. Somebody can just listen to you. Okay, whatever the data you send, they will say, listen to you. Then, what are the tools? There are so many tools available, free tools available for doing this. To capture the packets. For capturing the packets, that is called packet capturing tools. There are so many tools available for this. Okay, example, you can see here, these two tools are the very, very popular tools. Okay, the first tool is TCP dump. Okay, TCP dump is a tool. Okay, we will see in the lab part, in the lab, okay, I will show that. And also, we are having one more tool, a very popular tool, it is called the wireless tool, sorry, Wireshark. So, these two tools, very commonly used, for eavesdropping to capture the packets. Okay, so this is about the eavesdropping. Now, next one is the second attack, a very popular attack is script analysis. Today, today we discussed about this in the computer security. A. So, what is script? Okay, script analysis means in cryptography, that means encryption. Okay, I, I'll go to the same diagram. Okay, now you can see. So the first person is having some message, some data. So he is going to take the data. So this data is going to do encryption. Okay, so encryption is going to encrypt the data. Then what is the output of the encryption means? The output of the encryption is going to be the cipher text, CT. Okay, you might have studied this in previous course. So this is your data. So the data, or you can say message, or you can say it is plain text. So the plain text, I'm going to send it into the encryption algorithm, encrypt. For encryption, we need a key. Okay, without key, you cannot do encryption. So you need a key for this. Okay, I'm using a key. I'm going to encrypt. So what is output means? Cipher text is a output. Now, so this cipher text, I'm going to send it. Okay, the cipher text, I'm going to send it to my friend. Okay, cipher text, I'm sending it to the destination. Now, the attacker can capture the cipher text. The attacker can capture the cipher text now the attacker is going to decrypt or he is going to try to decrypt without key he doesn't have the key okay he doesn't have the key he don't have the key but still the attacker is going to try to open this cipher text he is going to open it this is called crypt analysis so crypt analysis means you are going to encrypt that means the attackers are going to decrypt decrypt a cipher text without any proper key they don't have the proper key but still they will try okay they will try so okay teacher is it possible nowadays possible there are tools available okay there are some tools available so from the using the particular tools okay they can try okay they can try to bring okay the data that means the plain text from the cipher text without using any particular key so this is called script analysis. Okay, in one line you can see it is a art. Okay, you see the word. It is a art and science. It's an art and science for what? Finding useful information from from what? From encrypted data. From encrypted data. Okay, good. Then without knowing the keys, this is the 
without knowing the keys without having the keys so trying to break a cipher text if you are breaking a cipher text so this particular art or this particular thing is called cryptanalysis so this is a very common attack then next one password capturing or pilfering what is that means guessing the passwords guessing the passwords common passwords okay so i'll just ask you a question okay very simple question i'll give five points now okay you no need to give me the answer okay no need to give me the answer i'll give five points i'm going to tell five points now you just okay put 1 2 3 4 5 if you say yes okay make one two three like that okay put the total now how many of you use 1 2 3 4 5 4 5 4 3 2 1 4 1 a b c d okay as your passwords this is point number 1 if you say yes okay just note it one you got one mark shall i repeat it again yes repeat okay point number 1 okay if you you can you can say yes or no for this if you say yes make it one okay make one mark for you if you say zero okay that means if you say no make zero for it okay what is the question means how many of you or do you use okay i'm asking individual students do you use 1 2 3 4 5 5 or 5 4 3 2 1 5 or a b c d okay like this or you use any passwords like this okay your answer may be yes or your answer may be no if it is yes make it one okay you got one mark if it is no make zero your mark is going to be zero this is my first question finished shall yes. i go to the yes yeah. now i'm going for the second question question number 2 so the second question is how many of you use okay your name that means the personal information your name or your date of birth or your mobile number as your passwords or do you use your personal information information like your name okay your date of birth okay date of birth date of that mean the year okay anything date of birth year okay anything and mobile numbers so do you use any passwords like this if you say yes make it one okay you put one mark for you then if you say no make zero for you so totally we completed two marks then i'm going for the third question question number 3 i'm going for the third question question number 3 how many of you use the common names or the common words so common words means in any english word okay uh, example for example computer network water pen pencil any word which you can find it in the dictionary any di direct english word okay hello how are you any english word any english word which we, which is directly available okay in the dictionary the direct words okay if you use any word okay like that okay welcome any word okay even uh, any any words which are available in the dictionary okay so please if you say yes give one more for you okay if you say no make it zero this is the third question question number 3 so any words directly used from the dictionary okay as your password okay shall i go to the next question number 4 then if any anybody okay so i want to know any one of you using okay the information surrounded by you okay for example uh, name of the city 
like sur okay masked sogar the name of the city so the name of the country you live okay like oman okay or the name of the college in which you study okay so anybody having like this if you have okay if you use any of the password like this you can give one mark for you if you say no make it zero okay so any of the words okay surrounded by you surrounded okay surrounded means like uh, any shop name of your shop okay for example i'm i'm fixing my password as lulu okay i'm going to fix my password as okay i'm using a uh, dell computer so i make dell so like this so based okay whatever you see okay the environment okay please make it one if you use any password like this okay make one okay one mark for you if you are not using that okay make zero for you okay you know four questions enough now please type your marks in the comment how much you scored total i need total zero 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 okay very good one one zero 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 total mark out of four out of four okay how much you scored okay i want to know one two zero type it in the comments two out of four very good then please type okay how much okay how many marks you got out of this four how many yes you got out of four Zero 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 zero. Good. You can give total marks. Total. One mark. Two mark. Yes. So many students are giving. Okay. If you score. Okay. If your if your score is zero, out of four. Out of four. if your score is zero you are very good you are completely secure okay so you people cannot guess your passwords okay if you even have one or two or three or four you have to be very careful your password can be easily guessable okay your passwords can be easily guessable okay people can easily guess your passwords this is the thing that you have to understand now go to the slides in the slides you will understand what is password filtering means easily okay you can guess the password a legitimate passwords easily you can guess okay easily you can guess okay see the passwords user passwords are guessing you can easily guess your passwords how you can guess by following a particular person you can follow your person okay you know the name of your person okay what is his date of birth okay what is his okay for the family name in which college he is studying in which city or town she is working or living so based on that easily someone can guess your passwords okay you can see everything dictionary attack site channel attack okay passwords can be easily found so this is the third type of attack okay that means yeah this is the third type of attack very common attack password guessing attack is happening okay this is the third common type of attack okay the next one is identity sniffing so what is identity sniffing means okay some persons okay identity sniffing okay what is that means so this is almost okay called man in the middle attack what is man in the middle attack means go to the previous slide see this is man in the middle attack what is this so this is the sender and this is the receiver i am the attacker who is in the middle now suppose the sender is giving his username and password to him by email okay or through some chatting okay so the first person is sending the username and password to the second person now in that case what is going to happen means the third person okay that means 
the man in the middle okay the man in the middle so he is going to take a copy of that he is going to capture that then he is going to become a legitimate user he can access it so he can access okay you you if i have your username and password i'm going to behave like you i'm going to behave like to like you i'm going to act like you then i can enter into your user your login and everything i can take so this is called identity snoofing so this is also a common attack which is going on nowadays okay if you are going for the network these are all the common attacks then the next attack you can see buffer overflow so this buffer overflow this is the fifth attack we are going to study the fifth attack is okay we are just giving a definition we are not talking about everything we will see it later now what is buffer overflow means this is this attack is something more technical so this attack will be available in the software in the softwares and this attack will be related to memory buffer okay so what is a buffer overflow means you can make that means the attackers will make the buffer that means the memory full and because of that they can run some unwanted code some some unwanted codes okay they will run and they will crash a system okay it's a very beautiful concept i'm not going to explain this entirely because buffer overflow is one class okay buffer overflow is one class okay i can give you an example so what is this means in buffer overflow okay they are going to use the loophole or the vulnerabilities available in the softwares okay and also they are going to use the buffer overrun concept buffer uh, over overflow concepts so using the buffer overflow the attacker can run or ex execute some unwanted commands and he can delete all the data in the memory okay in the memory so we are going to see in some other lecture what is buffer overflow example for buffer overflow we are going to see it so no need to worry about it so this is a common attack then the next attack is repudiation so what is repudiation means people are going to deny okay the people are going to deny something they will do something after that they won't accept it okay see they may not want to admit admit the ownership okay they will do something some actions they will do but later on they are going to deny no i didn't do it okay did you send a email to me yesterday no no i didn't do it but email is available with me in my mailbox so this is called repudiation a sender or a receiver so they can deny their action so whatever they they do or whatever they does so they are going to deny okay they are going to say no for it so this is going to be a repudiation okay this is one of the common attack then the next one is intrusion so what is intrusion means entering into the others network entering into the others network others network or other systems if somebody is entering okay a yeah, yeah, attacker is going to enter into our network and is doing some changes in our network means this is called intrusion okay so a illegal okay a unauthorized user enter into okay you see intelligent user sorry uh, illegitimate user illegitimate means unauthorized so unauthorized user is going to enter into somebody somebody's network and he is going to gain access he is going to access everything available there so here using a tcp protocol or a udp protocol any protocol they can use so using the protocol they can enter into your network in the others network and they can do any changes in that network this is called intrusion so intrusion detection system lecture number 12 or 13 i think in the same course we are going to discuss about it okay so this is called intrusion then traffic analysis about traffic analysis already we have studied the first attack what is the first attack means capturing the traffic the packets so in traffic analysis what they will do means 
So the attacker will capture the packets and they will see the header, header of the packet. What is that? What is available in the headers? Okay, what is the source IP address? What is the destination IP address? Okay, you see, I'm going here. So take this, this is a packet. So the packet is going from here to here. The attacker has captured the packet. Now, what is available inside the packet means, so the header, header means source IP address, destination IP address, port number, destination port number, source port number, MAC address. So there are so many information available in the header. So all these things that the attacker is going to read. Okay, what type of packet it is, to whom you are sending this, okay, what type of protocol you are using. So everything they will analyze. So that is called traffic analysis concept. So you can capture the package, then you are going to do the analysis. So from where to where the packet is going, what type of packet it is, what is the size of the packet, everything they will read it. They will do the analysis. So this is called traffic analysis. Then the next one, okay, you can see denial of service attack. So denial of service attack is a very, very common attack, very interesting attack. In computer security A, there is one lecture available for this. Network security A students also, if you want to attend, you can attend that lecture. It's a very interesting lecture. So what is denial of service attack? So denial of service attack means the attacker will send huge number of packets okay huge number of packets okay that is we used to say a bulk okay flooding there is a word called flooding so huge number of packets will be sent from the attacker to a machine so that the machine will go down okay the, the machine will not be available the service will be completely closed Okay, the service will be completely closed. So this is called denial of service attack. It's a very interesting concept. Distributed denial of service attack is available. Okay, there are different types available. Okay, so in a denial of service attack, the attackers will send a huge number of unwanted packets. Okay, huge number of unwanted packets for a target, for any target to disturb, to disturb the particular machine. Okay, to disturb that particular machine or to disturb that service, to disturb their service. So this is called, okay, uh, denial of service attack. Then the next type of attack, very common attack is very interesting thing. Okay, it is virus, virus, worms, rootkit. So this is also one lecture in computer security. If you have already completed computer security A, you might have understand this malicious softwares there are so many malicious softwares available virus worms trojans logic bomb backdoor spyware okay ransomware okay plenty of okay softwares so they will simply send the softwares okay that means the malicious softwares the attackers will simply send it to you Okay, so it will create lot of problems, it will create. Okay, it will create lot of problems. So, malicious software is one of the common attack. Okay, if you go for the network, so the common attack is malicious software. So, almost nine different attacks, nine different attacks we studied here. Okay, uh, it is not, okay, we are not done completely, just we are giving a abstract. Okay, what is that? But in the coming lectures, we are going to see many of these attacks we are going to see and we are going to study about this attack. And also we are going to study, okay, what are the mechanisms available to stop this. So if you take denial of service attack, how you can stop? How you can protect yourself from denial of service attack? We are going to study it later. If you take malicious software, how to protect yourself? From the malicious software we will see it later okay now i'm moving to the next slide you can see attacks we are dividing into two types 
one is called the active attack and second one is called the passive attack these are the two different types of attacks so active attack passive attack what is the difference okay we discussed there are so many attacks we discussed so this attacks we can divide into two groups okay you can divide into two groups one is active and second one is passive so what is active attack means active attack will have a severe impact it will affect you it will affect you that is called active attack passive attack means it does not affect you it does not affect the system you can see in this example in the first example you can see here so this is the attacker now bob is sending some data to alice now so the attacker is taking a copy of that attacker is taking a copy of that so because of that okay alice is not going to be affected okay but your data is available with someone this is called passive attack so in the passive attack a third party will collect okay the third party will collect the packets they are going to collect the packets okay so this is going to be the active attack see the active sorry sorry passive attack passive attack does not affect it is not going to have any effect on the system system resource but if you go for the active attack it will have a severe a serious impact okay now you see the data is going from bob to the attacker the attacker is doing some changes okay the attacker is doing some changes in the message please transfer 100 real to me but the attacker is changing please transfer okay 1000 real to this account number is changing the attacker is changing the data okay he is changing the message and he is sending it to him to alice so active attack it will have some impact negative impact it will have but the passive attack it is it does not have any passive but this is also severe problem this is also problem okay because your data will be available with someone but here you are going to have incorrect data okay that means the data is changed by somebody okay so try to understand the difference now passive attacks give some examples for passive attacks okay examples very easy example is monitoring eaves dropping okay you see the picture so what is the eaves dropping means listening to someone else okay listening to someone else what they are doing what is the e what what does okay what what type of packet is sending so monitoring or transmissions okay all the network transmissions okay simply if you monitor it is called passive attack okay there are two different types of passive attacks so one is called traffic analysis so this is what we have done in the previous slide traffic analysis we discussed collecting all the packets okay finding go to the header so in the header they will find what is the source ip address what is the destination ip address okay to whom the packet is going what type of packet it is so everything they will do it traffic analysis then the release of message content release of message content means they will take your data and they will release it somewhere so your secret or your data okay will be exposed or it will be released okay in an unauthorized way okay so the release of message content so secret message they will capture there are so many websites available so they are what they are doing means they will capture the data from somebody and they will reveal it okay they will reveal in the internet so this is going to be the passive analysis now what is active give examples for active there are so many examples we can give active attacks so active attack is going to affect your resource okay give examples means you can see here these are all the active attacks denial of service attack okay denial of service attack just now we discussed it is a active attack modification of message somebody okay a third person 
is going to change your data modification of message active attack replay attack so replay means okay multiple copies you will have multiple copies okay this multiple copies it will not match so that is going to be the replay attack this is also a active attack masquerading so masquerading means unauthorized person behave like a authorized person unauthorized person behaving like a authorized that is called masquerading masquerading means putting mask okay if someone is wearing the mask of another okay so that is going to be the masquerading so masquerading is an active attack replay is an active attack modification of the messages is active attack denial of service attack is a active attack so these are all okay the examples for active attack. not only this okay this is not a complete list virus infection so a virus okay it's just completely okay infected my computer my data completely i lost my data it is active attack somebody entered into my computer and they deleted everything all my messages deleted active attack so in active attack you will have a severe impact okay there will be a severe impact whereas in the passive attack okay the attacker is going to capture your packets okay they are going to monitor okay so up to this we are completing what is active attack what is passive attack now so the next one is security service okay so different services we can expect okay so if you go to the uh, what to say to toyota showroom what you can expect you can expect a car service okay because they are doing okay service only car service they are doing so if you go for a restaurant okay i'm going to a restaurant so in restaurant what what service i can expect means i can expect the food they can give they will provide me a good food so they provide okay services providing the food so if you come to the college so in a college what type of services you can expect means you can expect teaching hospital they are providing a different service if you go for security what type of services you can expect means you can expect these types of security services you can expect you take anything any security solution or any security mechanism or any security tools okay if you take so it will provide okay you can expect this different services what is that authentication service access control service data confidentiality service integrity service and non repudiation service so these are all the services five different services we can expect from a security system okay from a security system these are all the five not only five okay we have five here so so many services you can expect so these are the five categories of services we can expect from the security okay now you can you will understand okay in the coming slides you can see now you can see authentication is a access control is a confidentiality is there okay integrity is there and non repudiation so in the next five slides we are going to talk about this five different services almost you know everything let me start with the simple i'll go for the confidentiality so what is confidentiality service what is confidentiality service that means your data must be protected so the confidentiality service is going to protect your data from the unauthorized person when the data is moving okay because network security you see so protects all the user data transmitted between the two users over a period of time so when the data is moving from one place to another place we have to protect okay the data must be protected then protection of a single message or even a specific fields within the message so a single message or even a single okay character you can take it 
So even a single field within a message, you can protect. So what is the concept? You have to protect the data when the data is moving. Okay, when the data is moving. So this is called data confidentiality. Then protection of traffic flow from analysis. So what does that mean? You have to protect your data. That means attackers should not capture your packets and do analysis. Attackers should not capture your packets and they should not do any analysis. So you have to protect from that. Okay, so this is what is that means all your packets must be protected so that the attacker not able to observe the attacker not able to observe from where the packet what is the source of the packet what is the destination of the packet what is the frequency of the packet the length of the packet all this information attacker should not get okay the attacker should not be able to do this so this is called confidentiality service so what is a confidential services means you have to protect your packets plus you should not allow the attackers to take you the copy plus you should not allow the attackers to do any analysis so this is called data confidentiality service now i go to the next service integrity no need to read it okay just listen to me what is data integrity service means unauthorized users should not modify your data unauthorized users they should not modify they should not modify your data that means you see no duplication no insertion no modification no reordering no replace this is called okay data integrity Okay, that means the attacker should not take a copy. That is called the duplication. The attacker should not insert. Okay, they should not insert anything. They should not modify. Attacker should not modify your data. The attacker should not change the order of your message. And the attacker should not repeat your message. So all these things, if you do, that is going to be the data integrity. So data integrity service. try to understand the concept okay if you understand the concept easily you can write it okay no need to memorize the text then what is a non repudiation service means we know that what is non repudiation service means both the sender and the receiver should not deny their action both the sender and the receiver okay see either sender or receiver from de denying a transmitted message okay that means i'm sending a message to you after that i'm going to deny no i didn't send no i have proof so this is the proof so non repetition means it is going to avoid it is going to prevent the sender or the receiver from denying their action anything anything you can prove you have to prove it if i send a message to you or if i give me give you a missed call so the call will be available okay the call will be available in okay in the uh, call register so there is a proof available okay what is this you have to create proof for everything okay everything okay we have to create a proof so that the users cannot deny it okay the users cannot deny it so this is non repetition so three services we completed one is the data confidentiality second one is the data integrity and third one is the non repetition service okay let me go for another two services one is called access control so what is access control means giving the rights giving the rights that is called the access control some users you can give more rights some users you cannot give more okay you can go for very less and some users no rights no rights means they are not authenticated they are unauthorized people so access control in our college we have a very clear access control system students means you are having a different rights 
teachers we are having a different rights administrators they have a different rights so for everybody okay every entity or every users there will be a different set of rights okay available this is called access control so by using this you can limit you can control okay a teacher cannot access the administrator's user a student cannot access the teacher's login teacher's login or teacher's files anything so this is called access control mechanism so access control service is very important for security data confidentiality is very important data integrity is very important non repetition is very important now let me go for the last one which is called the authentication so what is authentication means anybody any user must be authenticated must be verified okay for example you enter into the college system means they will ask you okay to give the username and password i'm going to the bank muscat website www.bankmuscatonline.com so now immediately a screen shows enter your username and password so i'm going to enter my username and i'm going to enter my password now if these two things okay they are going to check they are going to check okay they are going to verify it if these two two things are correct i am authenticated so i am the right user i can access the system so authentication is a very very important one okay you can say there are two different types of authentication peer peer entity authentication means users users okay when when you enter into the sis they will ask you to enter your username and password so that is called the peer authentication data origin authentication what is data or origin means from where the data is coming okay you, you you may not understand the second one now okay so this will be explained in some other uh, lectures okay so data origin means from where the data is coming okay you are all listening to me okay i'll give you a very simple example how do you know that i am the teacher how do you know that i am working in okay in so so you can check it you can verify that by using my email id my email id is okay dot so cas.edu.om so using that you can authenticate okay you can you can make sure that this is okay mr raja from this particular college so i am going to attend the call, class so this is called data origin from where the data comes okay you cannot accept all the data okay you have to authenticate from where it is coming so if it is coming from a correct person then you can accept it then so this is about the authentication so five different services authentication service access control service confidentiality service integrity service and non repetition service so these are all five different services which are expected okay which are expected from a security system okay from a security system okay now i am going for the next for the next topic is the this i think this is the last topic i think we are one more that's it now so the next one is security mechanisms there are plenty of security mechanisms available in computer security yes students i'm telling today morning we discussed about the uh, the chart what are all the different technologies used so the list of technology so in the in the list of technology you can see the top most the top most is antivirus then firewall okay so what are all the security technologies used the same thing here so these are all the different security mechanisms available we can use any of this we can mix this and about all these things we are going to study in the entire course in network security a almost all the security mechanisms we are going to study okay what are they you can see encipherment encipherment means okay like encryption decryption cryptography 
then we have digital signatures we have access control mechanisms data integrity authentication exchange <coughs> traffic padding routing control notarization trust functionality security labels even deduct deduction security audit trial security recovery so these are all the different mechanisms available we are not going to study all the mechanisms from this but some mechanisms we are going to cover in our lecture okay now so let me go to the last topic network security model <clears throat> so how okay we can design okay a simple network security means you can see this is a machine okay and this is the another machine so two machines i am going to connect it by using internet so this is what i explained in the first slide itself okay what is network security so two machines they are connected with each other just imagine they are in different place different locations now so what are the security mechanisms we can have you can see here you can have a crypto system crypto system means you can have encryption and decryption here then you can have ams that means anti malicious software or you can have some uh, anti virus softwares you can have then <clears throat> you can have some intrusion detection system all these things we are going to discuss so intrusion detection systems you can have and you can have your firewall for your network so these are all the different security mechanisms you can use so firewall is a security mechanism intrusion detection system is a security mechanism okay anti malicious software this is a security mechanism crypto systems security mechanism so you can select anything and you can have so see see the basic concept here it is data transmission your data is going to move here okay the data is going to move from one machine to another machine okay that is very important now i'm going for the another model you can see this is the exactly what is a uh, network model that is this is the basic this is a basic security model and this is going to be a network the same thing see i'm having a computer and this is the another one the destination so the two machines okay it is connected through the internet through the public network so i want to send some data from first machine to the last machine so what i'm going to do means i'm going to use encryption mechanism i'm going to use okay encryption mechanism i'm going to use so what is that see i'm taking the plain text i'm going to encrypt my message for encryption you need a key you need a secret key okay it is encrypted so the output is going to be the cipher text so cipher text i'm sending it okay i'm sending it in the public network so now your data is protected okay your data is protected so now so the data is moving now so even if a third person captures we cannot read it because it is encrypted now okay this is the cipher text now it is reaching the destination in the destination okay i'm going to decrypt okay you see the word letter d d means decryption i'm going to decrypt it and i'm going to get the plain text so what is network security means the data should be protected during transmission during the data transmission okay the data should be protected now let me go for the next slide you will understand one more thing okay you can see here in a network access security model okay this is going to be the the previous one is encryption model we are using encryption here crypto system but here we are going to have access control <clears throat> okay what is that see this is okay this is my network this is my network and this is the public network so public network means all the attackers are available here okay attackers are available here and this is my okay this is my network my private network and this is the public network 
now so the hackers virus worm everything is available here now they are trying to enter into my system okay they are trying to enter into my system now i keep a gatekeeper so what is this gatekeeper means the gatekeeper is going to be your firewall <coughs> okay the gatekeeper is going to be your firewall or you can use intrusion detection systems okay we are going to cover lecture number 12 i think ids so intrusion detection systems you can have so you can have any different mechanism here so this mechanism is going to stop so they are going to stop the access okay it will not allow you to enter okay it will not allow the unauthorized people to enter into your network so it will be completely stopped here so this is called network access security model okay the previous one is a crypto system by using cryptography okay so here you are going to protect only your data okay your data will be encrypted and it will be sent but in this scenario you are going to block you are not going to allow okay unauthorized people or unauthorized entity entering into your network okay you are going to block it here by using gatekeeper function the gatekeeper is nothing here gate gatekeeper is a firewall or a intrusion detection system or you can use any okay that means like anti phishing software okay any any thing any security mechanisms you can use it here which can stop okay which can stop unauthorized people to enter into your network okay so this is about the uh, network access security model now what we study okay so we covered all these things goals of network security cia basically cia confidentiality integrity and availability then common attacks so common attacks i think we discussed around 10 i think 10 or 12 different attacks to be discussed then osi security architecture we discussed what is the difference between the attack okay and threat we discussed then services security services we discussed and finally we discussed about the model so in the model also we discussed three things basic security model we discussed okay encryption based model we discussed then we discussed about the access security model network access security model three models we discussed so three models is having three different diagrams three okay models having three different block diagrams okay you can see this is the basic security model and the next one is a network model of crypto system then we discussed about the network access security model okay so with this okay the lecture is completed so why why i completed the whole lecture today means i think not i think i think the next class you are going to miss am i right